Hey everybody, it's me and Chris. Uh, we're going to our last job today. And this aquarium is very low on nitrate. So it'll be a really good example to uh, show you what that looks like in an aquarium, what that looks like in the corals. And also we're just gonna talk a little bit right now about nitrate, how important it is of a nutrient in your aquarium. It's probably one of the most important and it's the most misunderstood. So Chris, would you agree when people say that nitrate should be kept at zero, phosphate should be kept at zero, that's just totally out of line with what we see in these aquariums. So when I first got into the hobby, I, that's what I thought. You want your zero nitrate, zero phosphate, but after doing this job for a while and dealing with tanks, no. Unless unless you supplement it with some you know crazy amount of feeding, you know, amino acids and other forms of feeding your coral. The corals look so much better with uh, more nitrate. Yeah. So the corals are gonna look a lot better. They're also going to grow much quicker and they're gonna be a lot healthier. The reason for this is that corals, you know, they have the symbiotic algae that lives within them. And that algae needs nitrogen and phosphorus from the water to grow, just like a plant needs nitrogen and phosphorus in the soil to grow. So when we keep our aquariums ultra low nutrient, it hinders those algae from growing and we end up starving our corals. The contradictory part of this is that when you keep your aquarium ultra low nutrient, you also can cause growths of certain types of algae. Cyano, brown algae. Yeah, and, and you would think that having low nutrients would stop algaes from growing, but there are certain algaes that actually really thrive in that kind of environment. If you think about this from an ecosystem perspective, it does make sense because there are environments out in the ocean and whatnot where there are very low nutrient levels and there are going to be animals that are evolved to handle those kinds of environments. There are gonna be algaes and bacterias that do better in those areas than the beneficial organisms that we're trying to keep. So we're always taught that, you know, you want your salt water in your tank to be as close to the ocean water as possible. So the ocean has zero nitrates in it, or very low uh, nitrate and phosphate. Mm -hmm. So why isn't it like that in your aquarium? Because your aquarium is in the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, seriously, there's there's a whole bunch of uh, other things in the ocean that we right. can't have in our aquarium. Um, and there are nutrient, uh, it's not zero, zero nutrient all the time. You know, you get right. upwelling events around reefs where colder, more nutrient rich water comes up from the deep. Uh, more availability of food and nutrients to yes. maybe supplement the coral's diet. Yes, and it's not gonna be as consistent as it is in our aquariums. Right. Um, but it's gonna fluctuate and we're gonna get, the corals are gonna get the nutrients that they need out on a reef. It's almost a misnomer that um, reefs out on the wild are ultra low nutrient because there's so much nutrient cycling that occurs on a reef. I, I forget the exact number, but it's 90 something percent of the waste that's produced on a reef is literally recycled. Um, and that continuously happens. It's not like plastic where you recycle it once and then you throw it away. These nutrients are getting recycled continuously. So we're at the customer's house now. We're gonna give you an example of what low nitrates look like in an aquarium, and we're gonna test the aquarium just to make sure with our new Red Sea test kit. So I got the water sample from the tank. I'm gonna go ahead and test it now for nitrate and phosphate. So from looking at the tank, what do you think you're gonna see? Well, the, the corals did look a little pale. So to me, that looks like it would be low nitrate. A lot of people are shocked to hear that their aquarium is actually too clean. Um, but that's actually the problem that we run into the most right now when we're servicing aquariums. Chris, can you agree with that? Yeah, which was shocking to me at first. Yeah. So people are keeping their aquariums too clean now with modern reef keeping husbandry methodologies and newer filtration that's just better and more efficient than it ever has been. You know what I thought? You know, the older old school reefers are always saying you gotta have, you know, zero nitrate, zero phosphate, zero this, whatever. But our testing ability to test for these nitrates and phosphates has come a long way too. So our testing kits have gotten better, which means those those people that were in the hobby a while ago and they're testing for nitrate and phosphate, their test kits might've been reading zero, but in fact, there was really nitrate in the tank. There was really phosphate nitrate in the tank at higher levels than they thought. Their test kits just couldn't oh. get to them. They just couldn't measure for it properly. That's a really good point, Chris. Yeah, I had never thought about that, Yeah, but that's a really good point. Something to take into consideration. 
because these Red Sea test kits, I really can't highly recommend them enough. At some point we'll be selling them on our site, but the accuracy and the precision on them is by far, hands down, the best. Chris is shaking the phosphates, hoping that they'll turn color, but it doesn't look like it. So the darker, the, the, the more green this gets, the higher the phosphate level. And when it's usually this yellow color, I don't know how it pulls up on the phone, but it's a pretty good goldish yellow color. That means there's zero nitrate or zero phosphate in the tank. Yeah. So that right there is a sign that there's, yeah. corals probably aren't happy with that. Because phosphates are really important. You know, even the coral animals are pulling out phosphate from the water column and using it for the uh, phosphate backbone of their DNA. So if you starve your reef aquarium of phosphates, cells literally can't replicate the way that they should. And you can have the animals literally dying from not being able to perform basic biological functions. So we have our final results for our test that we did on nitrate and phosphate using the Red Sea test kit. And as you can see, the darker the color, this would be green and this would be a little bit more of a darkish pink color, higher the nitrate and phosphate. And we are at zero for the phosphate and we are probably between one and two for uh, nitrate. So we are dealing with a lower nutrient, lower um, nitrate phosphate system right now. So here is the aquarium and we're just gonna go over some of the corals real quick, just so you can guys get a, can get a sense of what it visually looks like. You can see that hammer coral right there is tight and shrunken in uh, to the skeleton. The war coral is, I mean, there's, there's bald spots. It's really tight to the skeleton. That's a good sign that it's low nutrient. You see those mushrooms right there. Those are small. They're not as big as they should be. Then we have these utter chaos that are translucent. Uh, the singulara up there is, uh, singulara is, is, is not as green as it should be. It's almost like a, got like a pale color to it. And then both colonies of his uh, zoanthids are not looking good at all. You had that euphilia coral right there, that skeleton um, that uh, had polyp bail out, so you just left with the skeleton there. Uh, what else do we have here? We have some, uh, the pallies are, are, are looking okay, they're doing all right. You have a 24 karat lepto, that's supposed to be a bright gold color and it's paled out and it's, it, you can see some bald spots in there um, as well. Which is crazy is this leptastria right here is doing good and I've noticed that leptastria is actually do pretty well in low nutrient tanks. It's, it's strange to me. <laughs> I guess they do pretty much well in every tank. Here's a lobo with some bald spots on it. The color's not as vibrant as it should be but you can see some bleaching spots in there. Uh, what else do we have here? We have a monopora that's just dull in color. That's supposed to be a, a, a very vibrant pink. Uh, so, you know, that's obviously a sign there. Uh, this shocked me. This is a Cephastria. I didn't even notice this the first go around. That's a Cephastria. I mean, that's, there's no color to that at all. Now, down here we have some more Zoas that are very pale. Uh, these are Utter Chaos. They're supposed to be a vibrant neon pink, and these ones definitely aren't. Now, this is definitely not a, a lighting issue. Uh, we have these same exact corals that were fragged from the same mother colony in other tanks. And the only difference is why they look better than they do in this tank is because the other tanks have elevated nitrates and phosphates, or at least detectable nitrates and phosphates. So we have not done the service yet, but I just wanted to point out to you guys, look how clean that glass is. Look how clean the sand is. We don't see any brown algaes on the rocks or cyanobacteria or things like that. We're not seeing those uh, nuisance bacteria blooms. Now, one of my working theories is, we tested this tank and phosphates were at zero, or at least undetectable, and our nitrates were present at one. So tanks that ha have tested the same way don't seem to have these bacteria blooms. Now, on the other hand, when a tank has elevated phosphates and zero nitrate, we notice a lot of cyanobacteria, dinoflagellates, and diatoms and things like that. And they get really bad brown algae blooms. So there's definitely something to that. We also notice that different species of corals react differently to uh, phosphate and nitrate as well. They all like different levels. So you just gotta find that happy balance. We recommend keeping your nitrate between two and five and your phosphate between 0.03 to 0.08. That seems to be a good range for us because you're able to not have those nuisance bacteria blooms and algaes, but at the same time, giving your corals enough nitrate and phosphates to be happy and have really good color on them. Now, every tank is different, every bio load, uh, your coral load, all that plays into it. But we just found that that's a, a very safe range that works for us. Stay tuned, we'll keep you posted on this aquarium. We'll show you exactly the results from us dosing tank nitrates and phosphates in the aquarium. 
I'm pretty confident that you're gonna see much better growth and coloration in these corals. Chris, would you agree? 100%. And just so you know, we're, we're putting this video out. We are literally, today is April 13th. We're starting dosing the tank missions, nitrates and phosphates today. Uh, this video is coming out soon. This isn't movie magic. We haven't already done this experiment. This is happening right now. This is how confident we are that raising nitrates and phosphates is gonna be a good thing for your aquarium.